you know, that's, I remember walking down that portion of Juniper, the last time was when I first moved here, and I went to Vetri, I went to the back door of Vetri to drop off my resume. Did get hired right away. But, um, and I remember this apartment building, and, and, and it looked so foreign to me, it was like so big city, and that was like, the, that was like 16 years ago, and, you know, I was walking down here tonight on the way here, and I was like, this is my home, so I, I don't know, this is my home. So, so, so Phil's been very good to me, and Phil's been very good to my uh, my uh, business partner Steve and, and our families. And well, you know, the coolest thing is that people come from New York and DC to come to Philly to eat Israeli food. It's the coolest thing. Ever. It's better here, so much better here. <laughs> Definitely. Um, when we spoke for an interview, you said that you do think of opening a federal donuts in Tel Aviv. Is that? Still in your mind? I, I think that would be phenomenal. I think Tel Aviv um, would be amazing. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but nobody ever sleeps and they eat all day long. <laughs> so I think fried chicken and donuts there would be awesome. At first, when we first opened the hub, I was like, after five years, I want a plan. I want to go to Israel and I'm going to get the first Michelin star. And Eight years later, I'm like, that is a terrible idea. <laughs> well, I just want to open a federal donut so we can hang out there for the summer. It was, it was clear to me, at, at first I thought I was going to do the film with finding a me, somebody who had never been to Israel and would have some kind of epiphany there. And then my wife and I came down here and went to Zahav. And we, out comes the hummus. We've all had good hummus. This was better. Then comes the salad team. We've all had good salad team. This was better. And that it was, was the it was actually even doing restaurant week. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so they were crazed, but we didn't even notice. And then Mike came out and sat down and talked to us for ten minutes. And he got up and I looked across at my wife and I said, "That's our. That's my guy." Because what I realized is that I needed somebody with all of these traditions. I needed somebody who was familiar with them, who could talk to these people that come from all these places, that their families have come from all these places, that understood the food. And also, very, very important, was totally self-deprecating, totally without ego, totally would listen to what I said, and you know, I lied about my uh, my knowledge of Hebrew. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and and so that's that's why. Why he said yes, I don't know. He's an idiot, I guess. Can you tell me more about why you did say yes? I said yes. This is like my this was my life's dream. Um, you know, representing Israel and uh, doing it through food is, I think, maybe one of the reasons I am here. So. It was, it, I couldn't believe that it was happening. It was totally random. I remember Roger and Dorothy sitting down at table 2 2, and it was, you know, on your Wednesday course, and I came out and talked, and we were, I think we talked a little bit about Israel and travel and all the different things that made up Israeli food. And uh, I think, you know, later that week, I told you I would come with you to Israel, and, and that was it. And you know what's crazy? We took uh, a group with us, a, a culinary tour, and actually most of you were here. You were here, right? Who was, who went with Mike? That was the first trip. So we were traveling, we traveled for 10 days, up and down. Do you remember how many times we ate a day? It was disgusting. Yeah. I was like, wake up, time for a second breakfast. Yeah, we, we had meals, like five meals a day. And then um, I came back, and I flew out 10 days later, and most, like 80%, of the things that we shot, I'd never heard of. And we just spent, you know, 10 days eating up and down the country. And like, I go to Israel at least once a year, and every time I go, it's a food trip. You can ask my wife, it's not, we don't do anything but eat, basically. And um, so it's just shocking to me that like, we'd go back and there was all the stuff I'd never done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you feel a sense of responsibility in helping to define what Israeli cuisine means in America? Yes, 100%. I think that um, we had these moments when Steve and I opened Zahav where we would go to investors. Uh, well, <laughs> they weren't quite investors yet. There were people who were begging for money, basically. And um, we were going through this thing, like, what do we call the restaurant? Is it Middle Eastern? Well, it's not Middle Eastern. 
because I mean I don't you know my family's not from the Middle East they ended up back in Israel so we call it um, like Jewish food it's not really Jewish food either you know and and then we were like let's call it Israeli food that's what it is we want to serve an Israeli meal but everyone was like well, what about the politics what about you know the conflict and I'm like well I don't know that's where my family lives dude can't I just say Israel without somebody freaking out? And the answer is that 50% of the time you can do that. <laughs> but the other 50% people make a really big deal about it. And I think that, um, and I used to think this like, what I'm about to say is so cliched and I would have totally made fun of anybody saying it. But honestly, if you, if you, <laughs> if you can approach the country through food, it makes things a lot easier. And at the end of the day, food is people and humanity. So why not? I mean, diplomacy, over there in general is pretty failed. Why not try food? You know? And and every and every chef that we interviewed, every chef that we talked to said, you cannot sit at my table and be my enemy. 